Hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar. As you can see, the participants are still joining, so we will wait for 10 more minutes. Uh, we will start the webinar at 2.10. Thank you for your patience.
Hello. Hello. Uh, webinar is not yet started. It will start from two okay. ten. Okay. 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 Sure. Okay. Okay then, uh, so it's already 2.10. So we'll start with the webinar now. First of all, good afternoon everyone and welcome to this Emerging Technology Webinar. My name is Samita. I am your host for this webinar. So first of all, talking about our uh, event sponsor, Synergetics. Synergetic Learning is India's most distinguished learning company in IT technology. We are ready with our top class learning solutions that can be made to fit every requirement in every sector across every industry around the globe. Our expansive greenfield solutions includes onboarding solution, reskilling solution, certification solution, certification plus add-on solutions, cloud adoption solution, Architecting solution, practice playbook solution, latest technology training solution, emerging technology training solution, content development solution, and more. Our uh, today's webinar is organized by ETC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technology. To connect with us, uh, you just need to follow our meetup groups, which is 
an emerging technology community for all. You just need to install the Meetup app on your phone and follow our community. So you can uh, you will be updated about our future events, meetups, webinar, workshops and more. Then the code of conduct that all you need to follow. Please note that you can't take a screenshot of the presentation and can't do the screen recording. If you need the recording, simply subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel link will be posted in the chat box. Now, as you can see on the screen, the agenda for today's webinar. You all will learn the following topics ahead in the webinar. Today's speaker for the webinar is Mr. Om Prakash Pandey. He is a MCT, a Microsoft Certified Trainer, and currently working as a practice head in Synergetics. Our next certification, uh, Microsoft Certification Webinar, is on AC2104, Microsoft Azure Administration, which is on 6th May from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. It is a full day webinar. The registration will, will be provided in the chat box. Now, for more uh, updates, for daily updates, you can, regarding webinar, workshops, and more, you can follow our social media platforms also. That's all from my side. Over to you, Om Prakash, sir. Thank you all for listening to me. Om Prakash, sir. Hello and welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for joining in. Sorry about the network issues at my end. I'm sure you are able to hear me clearly. And you are able to see my screen as well. Can I get a quick confirmation? Once my screen is visible. Yes, it is. Yeah, yes, sir. It, yes, yes, we can. Thank you very much. Yes. Guys. Thanks a lot, Samita. Thank you very much for a brief introduction of the session and about synergetics. I'm sure everybody has heard about synergetics. If not, we are a emerging technology organization focusing on a lot of new areas and making sure we get these latest information and whatever is the current status of the resources for most of your most of our audiences, people who have been associated with us for very, very long time. Our today's focus is quantum core solutions. Now, many of us would be thinking that this would be more details in terms of quantum physics, <laughs> understanding how do you create a quantum based CPU, right? and resolving a lot of uh, major concerns that one would have within the industry. I'm extremely sorry. This session is not about it. The, ses the session is not about the physics and the conceptual details about what is this quantum core and how do you build this CPU. This session is more about how do we leverage on the benefits of quantum core using Azure platform. As far as creating these resources locally is concerned, it's a tough task, highly expensive one to do. And this might take good amount of time to build resources, write applications or write programs which is aligned to these members. But after investing heavily and purchasing these machines and then trying out those things, I would not recommend it, recommend that. I would recommend even without investing huge sums of money, what if we can try these things locally? We can check for these things locally by using appropriate SDK, like a Q sharp SDK. Or and, and uh, one we are, once we are done with this, then hosting these applications or running these applications on 
Azure environment. So from a pep test environment, from creating the initial POCs, you don't have to invest heavily on that. So that's the core purpose of this session today. As part of the initial introduction, Samita already mentioned what will be the agenda for today. Brief you all once again on the same. So the core focus area would be understanding what is this quantum computing as an environment and why is it going into the industry? So there are people who have already adopted it. At the same time, there are other vendors as well who would be still thinking whether they can come up with a solution for it. There would be multiple organizations which are thinking about which kind of workloads or what resources they would use in context of quantum computing, what would be the next steps over here, right? And while these discussions are happening, while these evaluations are happening, Synergetics as an organization which has been uh, focusing on emerging areas, we would want to take this opportunity, right? Come to you all with our initial set of offerings where we can go with you to the management team, discuss about quantum computing, what are the options over here, and which workloads would be relevant in this context. We may not be aware about the domains and workloads at your end, right? So that's the reason why we have to work together on this, where we have some information about the quantum computing on Azure and being Microsoft partners for last 20 years. We can help you with free credits. We can help you with uh, having discussions with internal teams at Microsoft in this context. And at the same time, y'all could help us connect to your teams within your organization if they are looking at any kind of advisory solutions, right? Whether they are looking from perspective of pitching these things to their end customers or within the organization departmental heads, right? So we can work together on this area. While discussing about these things, what we are also looking at is various development options. What are the features of Azure Quantum? What is the underlying architecture over here? And finally, the implementation steps. I'm not sure if the uh, time that we have set for ourselves, which is two hours, would be sufficient for doing this. But I'm 100% confident that this amount of time is sufficient to get a kickstart. Okay where people can start exploring these options, start learning more about these in, in, in much more details. And having a starting point for this event. Let's begin with quantum computing overview. So once it comes to organizations, every organization has been trying their best to optimize set of existing resources. Using semiconductors and using silicon very, very long time. They have been trying to optimize and how do we best use these resources? Single core machines, dual core machines, quad core machine, octa core machines, Right, having uh, separate uh, graphics cards over here, the GPUs as well. So you all would realize that apart from software level changes, there has been enormous changes happening on the hardware level as well. If you all look at the virtualization, this is more in terms, or uh, if you look, if you look at virtualization, or if you look at uh, container driven architectures, microservices, right? So every organization is trying to make sure we use 60, uh, sorry, 
uh, starting from say 50 to 60 percent of the current CPU usage, how do we take it to 90, 95 percent? Right, and we, we are trying to devise various mechanisms using that. Now, why am I giving that history here? <laughs> One thing we'll have to realize that even after reaching to 90, 95 percent, if we are still not able to do our tasks in the given timelines, you cannot extract further out of the uh, current hardware setup that you have. So that's the time we need to relook at if we can manipulate or if you can create a new kind of hardware to uh, resolve or address concerns that we have within the industry today. Now, what is happening and why is why are people so crazy about going to the hardware level and rehauling it? Guys, the craziness is because of the data that you have. Amount of data is increasing multifold within an year. Or within whatever time span that we had earlier. There are masses who are providing data. And especially if I talk about India itself. Can you imagine the number of people who have been who have started using mobile devices? And. Thanks to COVID for the forced digitization. Every household in in today's context would have minimum of three to four devices. And I'm not exaggerating about it. This is a fact which I have observed. People may or may not have other luxuries in their life, but phone has become a basic necessity. I would not name it as luxurious. So with increase in terms of devices, what is the impact? People are accessing number of applications, sharing feedback, doing conversations, chatting, uh, trying to open up their own shops. <laughs> so somebody who is who was a household lady, right? She is now seeing opportunities of selling her products, solutions onto an open space. Right, using various uh, open market options that we have today, whether it is in terms of uh, Mintra, Amazon, or uh, number of ways that everybody is trying to in cash upon. Now, with increase in number of devices, with increase in number of data, increase in number of online applications, what is increasing is the processing requirement. So certain things which were uh, very easy, which were uh, smooth in, in past, now has become nearly impossible. Every cloud provider today, whether it is Microsoft or whether it is Google, whether it is Amazon or Alibaba, Oracle, everybody is trying to create a smaller environment with a high processing power, which can consume lot of data, process lot of information, analyze in analyze that data into smallest period of time and generate appropriate outcomes for the same. Right? And because of these reasons, we are getting into quantum computing as well. So if you look at the core members over here, you have qubit modality, like you have your uh, earlier hardware where we are talking about where, where we are talking about bits and bytes right so on the same lines you have qubit over here so mapping to bits you have qubits over here within quantum computing what it helps us to do is it has superconducting qubits checking for ion traps quantum dots nmr qubits right and these are all based on neutral atoms. So people have gone to the level of. Protons, neutrons, electrons, and at that level, how do you? Use these resources, how do we work with these members, work with these neutrons and. Leverage them from a processing power standpoint. Right, 
I'm sure things might seem uh, Greek and Latin over here, but it is Greek and Latin. <laughs> so I can't help with that because this is something which was part of our basic learning in terms of physics when we began our uh, uh, science sessions somewhere in six standard, seven standard onwards. We never realized that some some of these things will actually play a role in real world scenarios. Here, if you see. Leveraging on these qubit modality, you have different set of providers over here. So you have. Have various quantum hardware provider. Which is Microsoft, INQ, Honeywell. Honeywell has been uh, a big name from semiconductor and these kind of devices because they have been, they have been in this area for very, very long time. Then you have Rigetti, IBM Q, QCI, right? So there are plenty of vendors who would provide you a quantum hardware. Now, there are multiple ways of how one can leverage upon this. So one way over here would be to purchase this quantum hardware, install it locally within our environment. And once we have done that, get obviously like earlier also, we had a hardware team, infrastructure team, which is working with the, the hardware components and then the software team. The software team will have to write programs over here, write the, the relevant coding, build applications using that and run it on this hardware. OK. So if you look at the classical hardware that we had. Where those things have to be updated, upgraded, modified. Right, so once it comes to your interpreters, your quantum measurement devices, resources for noise reduction, so that classical hardware will still remain and they will align or they will associate with the quantum hardware. From the developer's standpoint, so this was about the hardware and infrastructure piece of it. I would not <laughs> need you all to get into the qubit modality, just as this is for your knowledge sake. You need to purchase a right set of hardware like we have been deciding how much of CPU will be appropriate for a given application. So similarly, we'll have to estimate that these are the petabytes of information which is uh, which I need to analyze. What kind of hardware will be? Optimum for it. OK. And here when I'm talking about a physical hardware, I'm saying you need to keep a margin of. 60 to 70 percent. The, the reason is. This is how the data will be growing in the upcoming years. So I would not want you to purchase this kind of quantum hardware every year. So once you have purchased it, it should be. Sufficient enough for next five years, 10 years. Right down the line. I'm not talking about cost here. I will talk about that a bit later. If you look at the. Software tools. So if you realize that. Plenty of. Application languages that we have, whether it is Java, .NET, or other resources, they were all built on the existing CPU, Intel-based CPU, ASUS, or other silicon chips that we had. So they were mapped, or uh, I would say the underlying byte code or the instructions which was which was being given was aligned to those kind of hardware, those kind of environments. Whereas and even uh, the app virtualization which was being done was still keeping the same things in mind. If you look at this new environment in terms of quantum computing, so we need to rewrite things. And we'll have newer set of tools over here. So whether you talk, whether you talk about your QDK or appropriate quantum simulators, right? Your resource estimator for how many petabytes, how what type of configuration will be required, or if you look at penny lane, right? So there are a number of 
ऑप्शन अवेलेबल ओवर हियर और सॉफ्टवेयर टूल्स विच आर अवेलेबल हियर विच कैन हेल्प यू मैप टू द quantum hardware which is been given by different vendors right and we can utilize them using these programming languages we can build different kind of user applications over here which is portfolio optimization or quantum simulation quantum machine learning based solutions basic user interface applications i would never recommend for those members looking at the power of quantum computing it will be always recommended and uh, by suggestion over here use it for high end analytics purposes that's where you will be able to uh, capitalize on the real potential of quantum compute now one would say omprakash oh, i buy this idea i totally understand what you're talking about processing of backup petabytes of zeta data or zeta bytes of zeta bytes of data that's where quantum computing or quantum hardware would make sense what is the cost of this hardware if you look at the pricing of each of these quantum hardware this might go into crores at times obviously depending upon what kind of configuration that you're looking at right that's where cloud platform will play a vital role right so as an organization owner or as a member over here would you recommend your organization to go and invest crores of rupees in a technology which is not yet stabilized and when i say stabilized i do i don't know how to fully or optimally use the potential of quantum hardware i don't have a real outcome or real plan for it in next 5 years or 10 years right and if i go to that team i go to my uh, cfo and say boss give me 10 crore rupees or 20 crore rupees i want to invest into hardware the next obvious question is can you show me some kind of road map how will you get me the roi for it and the answer is i don't know do you we have a team of developers who know that language who can write applications or programs aligned to quantum computing the answer is no as of now we don't have it so i don't have to tell you the final answer right you'll know what the cfo will tell you now keeping such kind of requirements or such kind of challenges in mind what i'll recommend you all to do is do these pocs try out these things on a cloud where which is pay as you go model so depending upon what all resources have we done till now or whatever actions we have performed till now we need to pay only for those members and if you want to actually get a buy in from cfo or any other team any other uh, management team members you have to show them over here that boss this is the normal outcome which i have received this is the time taken for it this is the uh, accuracy that i have got with my existing on premises environment or with the existing cloud resources which were we, which we were using this is the time which is taken by using a quantum computing yes i did uh, involve developer team members four of them to write a code for me to do uh, write a python code for it do the required processing and this is the results which i have generated in this particular timeline right and now if we have to process 10 zettabytes of data in this timeline this would be the kind of configuration required and believe me when you show these things working it will automatically cut ice people will be able to bind the point and do a required mapping saying that if this is a speed with which we can generate analysis we can take corrective measures faster it will be better in terms of competition faster in terms of faster in terms of processing these requirements or resources that we have
So I hope this conversation makes sense for you all. Let's go to the next set of details over here. So in terms of quantum computing, there are multiple members that we have. Let's get into details over here of quantum computing providers. So some of these points I have mentioned on the prior slide as well. If you look at the quantum, this is the first amongst the entire list that we have, which is a trapped ion system with fully connected qubits and the power over here is for mid circuit measurements. Right, so I will not be able to directly relate over here that one core maps to which member versus two core maps to which member. Right, but if you are looking at high end data processing. It is uh, recommended to go for rigidity or quantum circuits over here because they are much more powerful. Whereas in terms of dev test kind of environments in terms of initial processing, you can go for quantum and ion cube. <laughs> so uh, I'll tell you frankly, it has been a tough time for me as well because I come from a background last 20, 25 years. I have been working with. Um, on premises systems, other hardware rack servers, and now. Using that analogy to map it to these members, it becomes difficult. So that's why I'm sharing some of the uh, areas which will become easy for you to understand it. OK, so dev test environment, basic uh, POCs, can I lower in terms of between and ask you a question, please. Uh, no, I'll give, uh, give a chance of asking questions at the end. OK, thank Thanks. you. So what I have also done over here is I have mapped each of these resources over here with appropriate links. Just give me a moment. Right, so we can go to each of these members over here. So each of these providers have their own websites. Where they have clearly mentioned. What kind of products and solutions they can host? I will be sharing all these resources with you all. My apologies. Because as we keep learning and since this is a emerging area, there will be more providers that could have been added after I have done my study. So. Another hidden agenda which I have at back of my mind is. If I have a bigger team to work towards these emerging areas and we can form a group, we can have a faster learning. Right. Compute the uncomputable. So whatever details I have been mentioning about. And if you see the appropriate use cases, you all will understand why am I saying that from a production standpoint, go for rigidity and quantum circuits. And for smaller ones, you can begin with quantum and ion q. There are other optimization providers as well. For a specialized resources, specialized members that we have. So you have Microsoft Microsoft provided resource as well for parallel tempering, simulated and healing. It took me good amount of time to understand what is the algorithms or what kind of use case scenarios will be best fit over here? So if you're look, looking at weather forecasting, if you're looking at uh, 
um, various drug researches which are happening. What would be the permutation combinations over here? There are a lot of physics, physics based algorithms, statistics based algorithms that you all will be able to see over here. So many times people say it as a as a joke. Are you referring? Uh, uh, are you talking <laughs> Greek and Latin? So there are terms over here which is actually Greek and Latin. Right, so what is the target population number of workers? What is the effect of? Each of these members over here. So as I go ahead. I am sharing these links on the chat window. So whenever you all get time. You all can go through it. What is the kind of use case scenarios? Which each of these vendors are. Focusing on. Currently, my case over here is using these provider based solutions on Microsoft Azure. So I'm sharing these links on the chat window. So that you all can go through it. I have mentioned the links for quantum circuit earlier. Based on my observation or my current learning. You all will see very clear cut details from perspective of what is the kind of use cases a provider can satisfy? So no, but uh, less of people are. Less number of vendors are trying to lie about what they can do and what is their capability in this area. Because taking on a project or uh, taking on. A requirement and then not able to satisfy that or not able to uh, do justice with that that will be a bad name in market, right? So people are conservative in this area. Because this is the emerging space. So whatever information I have gathered till now or whatever information I have read over here, most of them are pretty straightforward and saying that out of 20 use cases, these are two of them or three of them which we can satisfy by now. OK, you all can go through more details on this. Based on the links which I have shared. Everyone should take this with pinch of assault that this is an emerging area. So there will be changes and modifications suggested by each of the vendors over here. So try and gather as much details as possible. So two set of members over here. One is your computing provider and second is the optimization provider. From my understanding when it says optimization provider, the focus over here is. Giving you pre-built algorithms, pre-built resources over here that can work on the quantum computing. Right, so like I mentioned earlier in terms of uh, hardware based solution providers and software based solution providers together and integrate from perspective of quantum computing. I did mention about some of the use cases earlier. I want to go into more details of details over here. 
So if you look at some of the core resources over here. You can check for new insights and modify the structures for the data. Explore the catalyst structure in terms of. Any kind of drug invention that we are doing from a pharma industry standpoint. Kinetic analysis on reaction pathways. So what kind of catalyst will work over here or if there is any change in terms of the molecular structures that needs to be done, right? That's where it can be used. We can use Hamilton parameters with active space or assembly free energy. So what with every chemical reaction, there is an energy which is being generated, right? So what would be the amount of energy which is being generated? So a lot of these areas which is unknown for uh, unknown for individuals, unknown for organizations, enterprises, right? Those things can be encached over here. Those things can be verified over here. So things like faster and the most important aspect which I like and which I would want to uh, go deeper into is the security aspects. Because <laughs> being from being from uh, application development and standard infrastructure point of view, right? My focus over here would be to ensure if I can create application resources and ensure better security, right? And today, if you see, Microsoft is investing heavily in terms of security solutions. So my hidden agenda over here is not in terms of molecular uh, study for drug testing, which could be your. Uh, point of view of, of attending the session or people, somebody who's working with carbon fixation or Grover's algorithm. I have two point agenda while I'm learning quantum computing. That is security in terms of data encryption. How do I? Uh, provide data transfer using interpolation, right? So, so these are two things which I'm looking for. If you look at the. Case studies over here, I think this will. Be very, very critical for everybody. From a learning point of view. I can see a hand being raised. Who's this? I'm sorry, I can't see the name here. Praveen. Yeah, Praveen, any questions you have? Praveen, I can see a hand raised. Any questions you have? No, 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 no. Okay. Not a problem. OK, so I have shared this link on the chat window. So I would need everyone to go through it. What are the case studies for quantum computing? Invest some time over here. So you have quantum algorithms. It will take some time for everyone, including me, to understand what are the possibilities that we have. Because whenever it got uh, difficult for us in our learning days, we have kept them as an option. <laughs> but now all those optional uh, areas are getting into a mainstream. But we don't have time to go back and study all these things. But yes, what we should be doing is having a know how of these things that should be sufficient enough because anyways, we are not sitting and we are not going to write these algorithms on our own. What we need to do is we should be able to understand and. Just one moment.
sorry guys i was mentioning about going through some of these resources and like i said quantum cryptography is this is the one of the core areas which i would be uh, focusing myself out of all the use cases which is being mentioned <laughs> the reason be this is something which is a software driven mechanism and from our uh, data uh, from our security point of view or organization requirements that we have this is an area which i would request others also to take a close look unless you are from a pharma background or deep dive analysis and research background this is the area that we should look at if you look at the current issues that people are facing from ransomware attacks or other security challenges and threats i think we can get path breaking solutions from this member if you move to the next section here we have case studies for optimization as well so the second area which i am looking for is network traffic optimization because if you look at the kind of uh, organizations that will emerge going ahead containers traffic optimization will be a next important aspect how do you manage network traffic within your containers within your resources currently most of these things are taken care by aks but things i foresee going ahead would be traffic optimization in terms of containers there are lot of other details as well that you all can go through in terms of optimization options so case studies in terms of computing and case studies in terms of optimization how we can use the current algorithms that we have and work with these members right i already have shared some of the details if you realize that the current use cases over here are relevant from government organizations high end enterprises right aerodynamics and energy signal processing hospitality sector drug testing so you see number of use cases which microsoft has already published and even other vendors are talking about the same i was behind samita and my other team members that i should get an opportunity to discuss these things share these resources with a larger team so we can have a forum where everybody can work together while we are discussing about these things some of the organizations have already begun their process they have started working on the poc of these areas so dubai electricity and water authority global advisory board right microsoft research team all of them are right now working on topological qubits over here and working with appropriate resources for the same so whatever i was mentioning about moving from cpus gpus into qubits all this is coming out of these readings which i did on various case studies shared by microsoft right so now i have shared these details with you all you all can go through these resources go through the elements that we have over here from optimization standpoint okay somebody had a point to discuss now is the right juncture for it i am not sure who was that
somebody wanted to share some details or ask a question. OK. Not a problem. Let's proceed ahead. So this was a quick understanding of what are the options? What are the resources available here? Let's go to the next section, which is. For this particular problem, what is the solution given by Microsoft? Right, so people who want to implement these algorithms, people who want to implement these resources, what is the approach that they can take? So if you see the uh, underlying resources over here, so we do know about various providers from a hardware perspective, INQ, Honeywell, QCI, Microsoft itself is giving the hardware implementation for the same. So you can use Microsoft as a hardware provider or you can use Microsoft as a software solution provider. In, in this context I'm talking about. So depending upon what is your. Requirement, how much processing power do you need? Right. Based on our requirements based on the. Study you can go for any one of these pre existing members or pre existing hardware solution providers or you can go with Microsoft. Now on top of these hardware devices, you can have other. Sensors or IOT devices which will be working along with it. Right. And if you see. These are the components which are. Behind the scene which is hosted by Microsoft Azure. Sorry, there could be some confusion here. Now one would say Omrakash, you are talking about Microsoft as a hardware provider. Then you are saying there will be other providers. So what Microsoft is saying is. Instead of you having to purchase these things locally, configure them, we will pro we will purchase it in the back end. Provision it within the data center that we have. You just have to pay for what you are using. OK, so that's the idea over here. So instead of investing crores over here to purchase the required hardware environment, we can get these resources behind the scene. Provisioned by Microsoft and what one needs to do is we need to have appropriate subscription over here. Of Azure. And once you have purchased that, once you have got that subscription, you can configure these resources depending upon our need. Let me repeat myself. From a POC perspective, from finding out whether uh, uh, whether these qubits and the quantum computing is a right solution for your problem, we'll have to find that out, right? And using cloud, we can do that initial POC with minimum amount of cost. So once you have the hardware piece being resolved. By using the cloud computing resource, this answers our question in terms of hardware. Without worrying about. Without worrying about the underlying platform, so now what I can do is I can get my developer team saying that boss, if you all can help me create resources using Q sharp QDK or write a simulation software. If you all I'm not sure how many of you all are. Uh, uh, beyond 40 45 years of age, <laughs> so when we began our journey on Azure, there were a lot of things that were happening using simulators, right? So storage simulator, compute simulator. So uh, and uh, uh, even even before that. People who were not able to go for the web server, we had personal web server PWS. Right, so there this this uh, hierarchy or this. Uh, um, existence of simulators have been there for very, very long time. Same thing, so now as a new technology, even for quantum solutions, you have simulators. Even even people might be using mobile simulators. So for iOS, 
for uh, uh, Android for uh, other members. So we will be using simulators to see how this application will look in this environment. Similarly, we can have simulators over here. Where we can see how a Q sharp code will work. What will be the uh, outputs for a given set of data or for um, given set of whether my program is compiling correctly, running correctly or not, right? How do I find that out? So even before we go to cloud, we can do these simulation simulations locally at a, a restricted level. Level number one, level number two, go to cloud. Level number three is purchasing our own solution if need be. If you look at the solution based services, you have quantum solutions, you have one qubit, which gives a complete package over here. And when I say package, it will be hardware. Plus required softwares and algorithms on top of it. Right, say for example, there may be. An organization which already has a. Drug testing. Core software being written. Based on. Quantum computing mechanism, right? So. As an end user as, or as a, another pharma industry, what we can do is we can purchase that software, give new inputs over here. And it will do the required calculation show us saying that this will be the stable drug that we have. OK, this will be a uh, stable or beneficial resource that we have. So certain things that you must have seen in movies where just going and changing the molecular structure gives a stable helix or a stable DNA, right? Some of these things can actually be as a solution over here. So it's no more about a sky fi movie or any such details. It's actually being implementable. If you look at the application areas I already mentioned about is optimization, machine learning, cryptography, right? So these would be the application areas for our underlying resource. I have already mentioned about the details over here. You can go to Azure environment. There is a complete documentation available for it. Azure Quantum Cloud Service. And if you see right now, if you start with the process over here, there is $500 credits which Microsoft is giving for people to evaluate these members, check for uh, check and deploy their application from a depth test standpoint from the uh, initial journey that you'd want to begin over here. So you have a resource estimator tool. I really like some things in. About Microsoft, especially in terms of emerging areas. Where people are confused, they don't know how much or what type of resource they should go for. So here you have. Azure Quantum Resource Estimator. Similarly, you have a VM Estimator tool as well. So what is the kind of inputs that you have? What compilation tools you are going to use? Right? If you have any details in terms of that over here. Right, so by using a sample application, you can get details out of it. What are the options available? How one can go ahead and work with these resources? So as you keep increasing the amount of information, as you keep increasing the amount of details, it will show you how much would be the. Utilization of these members.
So I'm putting all these resources on the chat window. For you all to go through. As I continue the discussion over here. So some of these resources that we have discussed about you all can take a look at it. This is something recent for me that is having a hybrid quantum computing. And as the name suggests, if we have resources within on premises environment, we have a quantum computing locally available. And we want to leverage benefits of Azure as well, right? So we can integrate both these members together and have a hybrid quantum computing. Options available. So. What could happen for organizations is yes, I have purchased a hybrid computing. I have purchased quantum computing locally. We had a specific focus or a target in mind, but. We are not meeting the current infrastructure is not helping me meet that objectives. So the only option for me is to sell this quantum hardware, purchase a new one. Right. Which would be a difficult task as of now. And that's where hybrid computing will assist you. Say. You know you need. I'm just giving an example, so you need 200 qubits for processing. You have 50 qubits right now locally available. Other 150 qubits you can get from Azure. Right, so that is a kind of hybrid environment that one can set up. And this is not something new. This has been done by organizations earlier as well, where. There was a. Six, 30 to 40 percent of processing data processing happening locally and remaining set of processing was happening on the. Cloud environment. Right, so similar set of implementations we can do, do using quantum computing. I don't want to discuss about the security aspects of Azure. Everybody is aware about it. So from a compliance standpoint, the complete infrastructure is. Readily available for us. What we should look at over here is the pricing. So what is the current price that you have if you purchase the hardware? Local infrastructure, if you are purchasing it, what is the cost for it? Vis a vis, what is the cost that you have if you go for? Cloud based model. It clearly brings out. The advantages. And one thing which I like over here from a cloud standpoint is pay as you go model. If you shut down the resource, you're not paying for it. OK, and whatever timeline that you'll have resource availability. How do we address all those questions? So $50 per hour or if you want to. Check in terms of Indian rupees. We can verify that over here. Initial 500 hours. Is free. As of now. Depending upon which kind of options you are going for and you also get Microsoft credits over here. Let's go to the next resource. If you look at. Microsoft quantum computing, I already mentioned about the hardware service providers. There are a lot of other. Providers as well, which is in terms of algorithms. Right, so in terms of Entropica labs or river lane or Q branch solid state AI. Strange works, all of these organizations are. Service providers based on the quantum hardware. So they may not have a they may not have a hardware themselves, but they specialized with their consultants and their team members. Making sure that everybody is able to adopt to these technologies 
work faster with them and what are the and evaluate other options available here right so with this new era set of technologies this is what people want people would would be looking at end to end kind of support so how do i conceptualize certain things how do i purchase a hardware from a vendor right and once that is being done how do i make sure i deploy my applications and get the outcome for the same so these are some of the core companies right now which help us do that there are a lot of details that you all would find from perspective of how microsoft is leveraging on these resources and helping people to go ahead host their applications one of the most important things which i like is q sharp as a programming language because once i have assured you that you all don't have to worry about the hardware the next obvious question is how can i use this resource right so for working with these resource i i would uh, request my team to organize another session where i can just focus on the development aspect of it by using something as qdk right but for that the prerequisite would be everybody has understood everybody has worked with the initial aspects gone through the initial aspects of quantum computing right so if you see the step number 2 if you look at step number 2 which is using quantum development kit which is a uh, additional plugin as part of visual studio and vs code so similar to our c sharp programming we have appropriate libraries we have appropriate samples over here through which we can create resources check for these members and you can relate this to our good old days of how do you create azure based programs or azure based pass solutions for storage account same thing we we'll have to do here as well so yes it will take some time to understand the language uh, understand the libraries but q sharp as a programming language is similar to c sharp uh, environment so it will it will be simpler and easier to begin with once you have understood those solutions once you have understood those options it will be easier for you all to work with it i already discussed about the pricing the reason why i went over there is because the the pricing keeps changing let's go to the next important section over here which is azure quantum development options so while the underlying classical hardware is being taken care we should be focusing on the new set of members which is resources like qdk how do we install that how do we configure it that's one second is using microsoft and one qubit which is pre existing quantum solutions i already mentioned about the resource estimator and how do you write a program to check for it and simulators as well so using these simulators we can see what is the outcome of these members and the most important entity over here would be resources where you want to focus on optimization and focus on machine learning algorithms in today's context training a machine learning model is one of the critical aspects from a artificial intelligence standpoint and what organizations would be expecting us to do is if we have so much of information if we have so much of details why can't we create a model which will uh, process these details and respond to them in in much more faster form uh, in uh, much more faster pace because the timeline to revert back to the customer is most important aspect if you look at azure quantum 
four members over here. Some of them I have already spoken about. That is resource estimator, simulator, underlying quantum hardware that we have. What we should be focusing on along with these members is. Quantum sol uh, quantum solvers. So if you have a problem on hand, how can we get a framework? Can we get a pre-existing readily available solution which will resolve those concerns for us? Right, so this is what is referred as Q. QIO solvers. Where you may have solutions based on classical hardware, which is your on premises environment. Checking for other resources over here. How do you work with some of the programming languages like Q sharp and run our algorithms over here? Did I miss out anything here? I think I kept this slide. So that I can go to. Azure environment and help you all with the documentation details. Let me do the needful here. So from a development standpoint, most important resource which I realize is your Azure documentation. So similar to other services, similar to other tools that we have that we all might have gone across. You have a lot of pre existing applications over here. My request to all of you all. Uh, one option could be installing this QDK. Right quantum development kit on your local machine. Or you can uh, install these things. Onto a virtual machine, right? Using a virtual box or if you want to go ahead with. Uh, Azure based VM. Right, my recommendation would be rather than doing it on your on premises machine, go to Azure, go to any other cloud provider that you might have. Create a virtual machine inside that and try out all these things on that machine. OK. Try out all these steps on that machine. So by that, what would be ensuring is you don't disturb your current setup. You, you, you don't uh, mess around with your current system that is working smooth. OK. And. Anything that you want to install format change, right? Do all these things onto a separate VM. If you'll have resources like hypervisor or if you have a virtual box or a VMware locally available, you can try out there as well. Right, so that will be a easier thing to do as compared to. Installing things on your own machine right as of now. As part of documentation, you can see. Different set of members over here. This one section of. Yeah, this one concepts. So whatever I mentioned about. I am not sure how much depth you all can take. <laughs> there is a lot of information being mentioned over here. What is quantum computing? What is the background over here? Right, all these things you all can dig deeper over here. Check for the options available, but my request is don't get too much into it. Because this is more information about why. Quantum computing came into existence. What is the architecture behind the scene? Our focus area is getting into development, so one or two links that should be good enough. Then we should deep dive in terms of tutorials. So once you have the Q sharp being installed, what next? Once you have the Q sharp SDK being installed, what is the next? How do we go ahead and start writing? A, a C sharp code over here. How do we? Get the right set of libraries packages and start working with our code. That is what should be your focus. 
so what what are the required packages for it how do we get the result back so either using local simulators or by using resources on azure environment this is what we should be focusing on so do more and more tutorials over here use appropriate quantum simulators Noise simulator, Tefoli simulator. You'll have to download these simulators on your machine. Check for the appropriate algorithms here. And that's why I was saying if you do it within your machine, there are chances you may install certain things. And while you are uninstalling, some of the important resources may might get deleted, right? Or might get impacted, right? So having a safe environment as a third party resource or uh, using it on Azure virtual machine will be a best option. I am not sure as of now whether you can run this Q sharp programs within a container. So that's why that's why I'm not recommending that. So check with your programs, check with appropriate simulators. All these things are part of your Azure documentation. You can leverage on these resources. Level number three over here or step number three after you have done the tutorials after you have learned about these members is getting into the Q sharp programming language like how we have C sharp. Language keywords operators over there same way you have options available for Q sharp as well. My suggestion over here, don't draw conclusions from a timeline which is required over here. So when you are using simulators or when you are using. Uh, uh, when you are using layers within your on premise environment or within a virtual machine, the time required will be higher as uh, time required for execution will be higher as compared to when you are performing these things onto a. Azure environment, right? While you are executing these things in the simulator, the focus should be what is the outcome which I'm getting, whether it is correct, is my algorithm working correctly, right? That should be your focus. If you look at features of Azure Quantum, what we are looking at is application of quantum physics to process heavy loads of information over here. So your Azure quantum would be an entry point to have quantum enabled resources replacing your classical hardware for much, much faster results. So three members that you'll see over here first would be an open ecosystem. So there are number of hardware solutions which is supported by Microsoft. While I'm talking about this. I would. Also want to showcase. Just give me one moment. Apart from documentation, you also have a complete set of learning path over here. Right. End to end resources from how do you create a member? How do you build appropriate resources here? I'm sharing this link as well. So that I don't forget it. Let me go to. Microsoft Azure. So as part of your Azure environment. Here you have quantum workspaces. I already have two workspaces over here. 
Microsoft Quantum, Microsoft QKS, While this is happening, I would want to create a new resource over here. To show you all the options available. If you see the resources that it creates in the background. Right, so if you see the options available. Use optimization providers. So let me go ahead with quick create. Let me mention the workspace name over here. If you see the providers available. Thank you. Microsoft Quantum Computing, Rigetti, Microsoft QIQ, QIO. So in my case, I already have the first two. That's why I'm going for the third one, Quantinum. This might take some time to create. And while this is getting created. Let me check for the members over here. So once you have your. Workspace created. Everything begins from the operations section. If you see the overview section, this is more in terms of information regarding the underlying environment. Notebooks basically are your Jupyter like notebooks where we have multiple resources being created. If you want, you can create a new notebook here or upload notebooks. Once you have these notebooks being created, we have initiated a job over here. How much time does it take to execute? Right, so and very important one. How much credits do you have for each of these providers? Sure, why it's taking time. You can specify your kernel type here. Let me mention. The name of the notebook. <coughs> Whatever cells you want to mention over here, the code that you want to mention over here, and then you can go and execute the same. Time. 
that we proceed ahead. So three members over here. So what I was trying to showcase right now is an open ecosystem within Azure Quantum. We can build our classical solutions over here. We can build our resources over here by using pre-existing members on cloud environment. If you look at the current quantum architecture, the way how it will work is, and this is more from a development perspective. So earlier, whatever we have been discussing is from the underlying resource point of view. So if you are working with these resources, this will this will look more similar to a batch job, right? So we can upload our programs, upload our resources on Azure storage, right? We can have a queue job for appropriate quantum resource, right? So once it comes to quantum processing, it would not want to come to the on-premises environment again and again. So whatever program or resources that one would want to execute, we need to push that onto Azure storage. As far as the data is concerned, the data could be on uh, data lake or it could be on any other relevant environment databases as well. So pulling the information from there, doing the required processing, and then finally it will give us the needed output. Right. Now that information also will be saved within Azure environment. So I can have multiple containers. So one container mapped for inputs, whereas the second container is mapped for relevant outputs over here. I already mentioned about the quantum simulation. Now moving ahead with the next member. Now one would say, Om Prakash, I have already done with basic dev and test. I have picked up, I have uh, gone through the complete documentation. I have gone through the uh, uh, Microsoft Learn resource that you mentioned. Okay, after doing that, how do I make sure that this will fit in in the overall organization strategy? Right. So if you look at the resources over here. It is just one part of the complete ecosystem. So if you have your Python programs, right? Or your Q sharp paste programs, all that information will be stored inside your uh, GitHub environment. Whereas the Python applications are concerned, they will go and execute. Those algorithms will go and execute on Azure Quantum. Now, once the outcome is being generated, once the outcome is being verified, published, we can leverage on Azure functions, logic caps, and once they are being executed, they will uh, provide us relevant details for our application. Once the data is being generated, we can use Power Automate or Power Apps. We can use Power Automate to execute things in backend. And once these have been generated, we can go to Power BI or go to a mobile app and show the relevant outputs over there. Now, moving on to the last step here, which is implementing Azure quantum computing solution through our Azure environment. Let me put this tab, uh, put this link on the chat window.
to everyone. Go to the link which I have shared on chat window. So I'm sure everybody has gone to the shared link. <clears throat> Let's proceed ahead. So if you look at the steps over here, Depending upon your sample gallery, we can pick up pre existing members over there. I'm not sure why this has got stuck. Let's go to our workspace. We can check for existing notebooks over here. Do you have a lot of pre-existing members as part of the gallery? Do you have your hybrid, uh, hybrid quantum computing, resource estimations, optimization, go to your, you can go to your Azure portal, check for the members available. If you have <coughs> sorry, if you have a existing notebooks, you can upload it here. If you want to create a new notebook. We can select which type of language you'd want. We can go ahead. Execute the resources over here. Azure dot connect. Can see this. So I can see the appropriate output over here. Authentication of the existing resource. Everybody, you can try this out. Create a new notebook and execute the notebook over here. What I was trying to do is I was trying to add this members under my notebooks, which is not happening. I don't know the reason for it. Because earlier I have tried this out and this has worked correctly.
Nope, it's not coming here. But nevertheless, we can get number of such information from relevant tutorials that we have. You can edit these resources. Put additional members over here. So there are a lot of pre existing members that we have here. You can check it out. So if you check out the steps over here, what one can do is we can check this. We can get this notebooks over here, which is prepackaged or pre-built. And once you have got the resources, you can run these members over here. Now some of the uh, examples that you all will, will be working on will have details in terms of namespaces. Here you don't uh, in uh, Azure portal. You don't require namespaces. So there are of such programs which are existing. You can try out those members over here. <clears throat> There's some of the customer case studies. How how it has helped various organizations to perform certain tasks. So if you look at the steps involved over here. Azure quantum. Whatever options you want to mention. We can also check. Within the Azure portal within the marketplace. If you look at the quantum workspaces, I have already shown these members to you all. And once you click on copy to my clipboard, you'll get the information here. You can go to a specific domain that you would want. You can choose a specific language that you would want. So once this information is being imported, once you have this details within your notebook, you can go ahead and execute your runbook. Check the appropriate outcomes for the same. So this is what all what I have from com, uh, quantum compute right now. So now I'm open for questions. So while you are trying out these resources, Go ahead. Anybody any questions in terms of quantum compute? So we already have some of the pre existing code available for INQ for continuum for rigidity. And the. Uh, the option that you mentioned over here based on that you'll have your appropriate details being created. Where you can mention your subscription ID resource group. 
you can check out the respective imports over here. Now these imports will change depending upon your underlying environment. So once you have got the details over here, you can define the circuit. You can directly execute some of these details. Within your existing environment. quantum circuit acting on a Q register. So some of the variables are missing over here. Taking it as a. I think I'm missing out the initial set of details. So what I'll recommend you all do is. Go to the link. Create your appropriate resource over here. And you can get these things working. So that's all from my side guys for today. I'll open the forum for questions. So anyone, any questions, doubts, queries you all might have regarding quantum. If you all have done some learning on this in past and you want to share with that, share with us on the same. You all can go ahead. So Prafulla, Arumugam, Hariharan, anyone, any questions? Sachin. Ashwin. I'm sure people would I'm have a sure. lot of questions oh, yeah, yeah. have a lot of questions yeah uh, actually uh, there is no question from yes, my end because i am yes, I to try these things but just wanted to say you a yeah, big thank you it was a very nice session actually um uh, it was crystal clear uh, even though i don't have the background uh, thanks much thanks lord sentil thank you very much for your feedback really matters a lot to me I'm sure guys, if we work together on this area, there's a lot of things to explore. This uh, forum will be open for you all. You all can connect to me or connect to Samita on the same. And like I said, we'll have another session altogether, specifically in terms of q -sharp, How do we build an application? And I would want to make sure I create a basic application on simulators using encryption. And I would want to share with all of you all. So thank you very much once again. Have a nice weekend. And happy learning to all of you all. Samita, over to you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, uh, for this informative webinar. And also thank you all uh, for attending this webinar. I have already shared uh, the feedback form in the chat box. It's a humble request to all to please fill and submit the feedback form before you leave the webinar. And if you have any queries, you can write down in the chat box or ask. OK, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Omar. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.
Thank you all.